Hi folks, in this video we're going to look at a calculation involving the neutral point of an electric field. So first of all, let's look at part A of this question. Explain what is meant by a neutral point in the context of an electric field. So a neutral point is a point where the electric field strength or the resultant electric field strength is zero. Or we might also say that as a, the electric field intensity is zero. So if we were to place a test charge at this point, then that test charge would experience a force because of one of the charges, and it would also experience a force because of the other charge. And what we're saying is that the neutral point, the overall resultant force that it would experience would be zero. So that actually leads into part B. So the question is, explain why there can be no neutral point between two charges of opposite sign. So we'll use a diagram to help explain this one. Let's say we have two charges and they're both positive. I'm going to call the first charge here A and the second charge is B. Somewhere between those two points exists a neutral point where the electric field strength is zero or the resultant electric field strength is zero. So remember that we define the electric field strength as the force felt per coulomb of charge. And that force is the force on a positive test charge. So if we were to place a one coulomb positive test charge at this neutral point, then it will feel a force. So that's what we're defining as the electric field strength. It's the force that would be felt by a positive one coulomb charge. So let's imagine what would happen to this test charge because of A. Well, because our test charge is positive and A is positive, then the two are going to repel. So our test charge would experience a force that would be acting to the right. And I'll just label that as a underneath so we know that that's the force that would be felt because of a if we look at b what effect is b going to have on our test charge well again because they're both positive it's going to act in the opposite direction and therefore we're going to have a force because of b so at the neutral point what we're saying is that this resultant force the, these forces actually cancel out so that the resultant force is zero. So the resultant electric field strength is zero. Now, if we change those charges so that we had two negative charges, well, if we apply the same idea, put our test charge here um, at what we're saying is the neutral point. Remember, our test charge is positive because that's how we define electric field strength. Well, what will happen is our test charge will experience a force, but it will be attracted towards charge A because charge A is negative. So it will feel a force to the left because of A. If we consider charge B, again, because it's negative, our test charge will be attracted towards it. So there will be a force acting pulling it towards charge B. Again, at our neutral point, those forces will actually cancel out. They will be equal and opposite in direction. But if we now consider the case where we have one positive charge and one negative charge, so let's say that A is a positive charge and B is a negative charge. If we were to place a point in the middle and use our positive test charge here and see what would happen, well, because A is positive and our test charge is also positive, they will repel each other. So a force will be felt in the direction to the right. If we see the effect of what B would have on it, on our test charge, because B is negative and our test charge is positive, well then it would also feel a force that would pull it to the right. So because we have opposite charges here, the forces will always be acting in the same direction and therefore they will never be able to cancel out 
so we can't have a neutral point in between opposite charges. Okay, so on to our calculation then for part C. AC is a straight line of length 100 centimeters. There is a stationary charge of plus two millicoulombs at A. Calculate the size of the charge at C if there is a neutral point at B, where B is a point on the line AC at a distance of 40 centimeters from A. So first thing we would need to do here is to take all this information and to put it into a diagram because that will really help us visualize what's going on. So we have a line AC. So we have A at one end and C at the other end. We know that this line is 100 centimeters. So from A to C is 100 centimeters. There is a stationary charge of plus two millicoulombs at A. So I'm going to draw on the charge here and we'll label that as plus two millicoulombs. Calculate the size of the charge at C. So there is a charge here, but we don't know what value it has yet. Calculate the charge at C if there is a neutral point at B, where B is at a point along the line AC at a distance of 40 centimeters from A. So we have a point, so roughly at this position here, we have point B, which is 40 centimeters from A. So looking at that um, diagram straight away, I mean, the first thing I would be uh, inclined to do would be to fill in any other bits of information that we can work out. Um, since we're told how far B is from A, we know that it's 40 centimeters. We can actually also work out then how far B is from C. And we can do that by taking the 100 centimeters and subtracting 40. So the distance between B and C is equal to 60 centimeters. We don't know what this charge is at C just yet, but this is actually what we're trying to figure out. Okay, so that is the aim of this question is to figure out what is the size of this charge. We do know from what we had talked about in the previous parts of the question, we do know that it will be positive because we do have a neutral point between these two charges and that will only exist if the two charges involved are of the same type. So since the charge at A is positive, then the charge at C must also be positive. Since we have a neutral point here, the other thing that we know is that the resultant electric field strength is zero, which means the electric field strength because of A at that point is equal to the electric field strength because of C at that point. So the first thing we'll do is we'll come up with an expression for the electric field strength because of A and then an expression for the electric field strength because of C. So electric field strength is given as the force per unit charge or we can also write that as KQ over R squared. So if we figure out what is the electric field strength because of A at the point B, we have our constant K multiplied by the charge of A, which is two millicoulombs. So that's two by 10 to the minus three. Divided by R, which is the separation. How far is it from the charge? And in this case, it's 40 centimeters. So that means we will have 0 0.4 meters squared. If we now look at an expression of what is the electric field strength because of C, well then we have our constant K multiplied by our charge. Now we don't know what this charge is, so I'll write it in as Q or QC, divided by the separation squared. Now we actually worked this out already from the diagram. We worked out that the separation was 60 centimeters. So we'll put 0 0.6 squared. As we know, this is a neutral point. And because it's a neutral point, 
that means that the electric field strength because of A will be equal to the electric field strength because of C. So we can take those two expressions now and equate them. So we have K multiplied by 2 by 10 to the minus 3 over 0.4 squared. And that's equal to K multiplied by Q divided by 0.6 squared. Now because we're equating uh, these two values of the electric field strength, we would probably get away here with not converting the meters to or converting the centimeters to meters, but it is good practice and I would still do that. Now what we will see is that on either side the value of k actually cancels out, so I can get rid of that. The next thing I'll need to do is because I want to figure out the charge. I have a divide by 0.6 squared that I want to get rid of. So I'm going to bring that to the other side where it becomes a multiply. So our expression then is 2 by 10 to the minus 3 over 0.4 squared. And now we're multiplying that by the 0.6 squared. And that's equal to our charge. So now all we need to do is pop those values into a calculator. And that ends up giving us 4.5 by 10 to the minus 3 coulombs, or just 4.5 millicoulombs. So again, just applying a common sense checker, that would make sense that this charge is bigger than the charge that we have at A, because this neutral point is further from point C than it is from A. And that's it. So hopefully that was useful for you.